Well, good afternoon and welcome to our Veterans Memorial Dedication Ceremony. My name is Craig Lambert and I'm going to be guiding us through today's ceremony. So first, I'll call on Gene Olson, the director of the Wisconsin Rapids Area Middle School Band. I'm sorry. The Lincoln High the Lincoln High School Band. So the Lincoln High School Wind Ensemble for a musical selection, lest we forget. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Thank you, Lincoln High School Band, that was, or Wind Ensemble, I'm sorry, that was fabulous. And um, now one of your students, Max Neiman. Max could please come up, he'll, uh, or, yeah, why don't you come up, Max. Max will uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So those of you that are able, please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance 
to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the band will uh, play the national anthem for us. Thank you. You can all be seated. Next to call in Reverend Caleb McGregor from the United Methodist Church in Port Edwards for our invocation. Let us pray. God of peace, for the grand call to serve home and country, for the act of laying down of lives for the sake of others, we pray this Veterans Day. We pray for those who have fought, whose spirits and bodies scarred by war, whose nights haunted by memories too painful for the light of day. We pray for those serving right now in harm's way, shield them from danger and bring them home swiftly. Lord, war is never holy, but all who are called to serve are still beloved souls precious to you. So turn our hearts and our minds and of those of our elected representatives, and of those whom we see as enemies, all toward the single work of justice. And may the peace and liberty that only you can give be the liberty that sustains us and the peace that saves us. In your name, and in honor of our service personnel, whom we are grateful are with us today, we pray. Amen. Rock Larson is our Wood County Veteran Services Officer. He's also an Army veteran, and he has our featured remarks today. So, Rock, please. Let me uh, start off this with a little message to all our <clears throat> students out here. Pay more attention to your high school speech class. You never know when it's going to come back and haunt you. Okay. 
I, Rock Anthony Larson, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me, according to the regulations and uniform code of military justice. So help me God. I first took that oath on April 9th, 1974. And after serving under honorable conditions, that oath in my service made me a veteran. It doesn't matter if you're on active duty, reserve component, in wartime or in peacetime, on the front lines or safely tucked away back here in the United States. You're an American veteran. Now, just for the record, those little differences on when you served and where you served do make a difference for your veterans' benefits. But rest assured, our National Guard, our reservists, those that are mobilized, those are not, those that have fought, those that have just stand ready to fight are all veterans. So could every uh, veteran here raise their hand just so we know who, who of us are and who of us aren't? I know you guys with the hats on are. Okay. Thank, thank you all for your service. That being said, uh, thank you for coming out to celebrate Veterans Day in 2021 here. Too bad we don't have last Sunday's weather. It's nice to gather, hopefully safely, after such a long time. It has truly been a wild and crazy time with everything that's happened since 2019 and the 19 in COVID-19. I want to say a brief thing, kind of off my script here, get on my veteran service officer. If a veteran passes away due to COVID-19, we want to make sure that you look for your loved ones and your friends. Was there an underlying service-connected disability? We've seen many dis our death certificates come through COVID-19. Well, the person had lung cancer or they had... Uh, coronary artery disease or, or diabetes, and all those are contributing and will wear down that, uh, you know, their resistance to COVID-19, and we could possibly get uh, benefits to the family. So, other hat, my office hat, okay. Okay, the oath that I read to you. The main principle, support and defend the Constitution of the United States. All veterans took that oath me as a 17-year-old who vaguely recalled reading the Constitution in high school civics class. Another shot to my scholarship uh, capabilities when I was young. Um, so how many of you remember reading the Constitution? Can actually remember, I read the US Constitution. Got a few hands? Okay. Has anyone read it recently? Another hand, great, great. Probably missed a few, but. Recently, as in last weekend, I reread it. I certainly have a different perspective now than that 17 year old did. With everything going on here and in the world, it truly is a timeless document. And has only been amended 27 times in the 234 years that we've had it ratified. <clears throat> so amazing. Several years ago at another uh, Veterans Day speech, I read this poem and I want to read it again. It is the Soldier, written by Charles Michael Province, a U.S. Army officer. It is the Soldier, not the minister, who gave us the freedom of religion. It is the Soldier, not the reporter, who has given us the freedom of the press. It is the Soldier, not the poet, who has given us freedom of speech. It is the soldier, not the campus organizer, who has given us the freedom to protest. It is the soldier, not the lawyer, who has given us the right to a fair trial. It is the soldier, not the politician, who has given us the right to vote. It is the soldier who salutes the flag, who serves beneath the flag, and whose coffin is draped by the flag, who allows the protester to burn that flag. He was a little bit off there. It's not the soldier that grants us those freedoms. 
It's our Constitution. And us, as service members, our oath to support and defend that Constitution. So if somebody else gave us those rights, we veterans have ensured that we still have them here today. Freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, the right to peaceably, there's a key word there, peaceably, assemble, are all in the First Amendment to the Constitution. The right to a fair trial is in the Sixth Amendment. In addition, the right to vote has been addressed not only in the original articles, but has been reaffirmed and redefined by the 15th, 19th, 26th, and 24th Amendments. Yet today, we still see issue after issue on the voting rights of our people. The First Amendment which gives us all the right to free speech and the right to peaceably assemble. That means everyone, not just the people who agree with you. A fellow veteran once stated how horrible and anti-American it was that the NFL players were getting down on one knee during the national anthem. I responded to that veteran by, I served in the military for their right to do that. Today's issues, like to mask, to not to mask, to be vaccinated, to be a strict conservative or a liberal, whatever those terms really mean, to defund the police, taxes, voter fraud, Afghanistan, immigration, just to name a few of what we're facing every day bombarded. We are all entitled to our point of view, but remember, so is the person on the other end of that issue. Peaceful, respect, dialogue on the issues, and compromise on the points that we can is what the Union and the United States means. Our Constitution provides us that. It's very hard for us to do that with human nature kind of working against us, but stop and think about our rights, our freedoms, and remember, it is for all of us, not just for those that agree with us. So I ask of you, be polite, be respectful to everyone. Google, or whatever your search engine is, the U.S. Constitution, it truly is an interesting read. It really is. And I want to thank every veteran for defending our Constitution, and for all of us, don't forget Vote when you can. Thank you. Thank you, Rock. Every year on the occasions of Memorial Day and Veterans Day, the committee honors the service members that have been added to the memorial wall and then also dedicates legacy stones. So here now to start with that um, honoring and dedication is Karen Schill. Thank you, Craig. I want to make I want to make sure that everyone can hear. Today, we dedicate the names of Richard D. Budzinski, Randall Everett Cox, James R. Niprath, Robert R. McGregor, and Patrick S. Parmeter to the Wood County Memorial. They join the 479 names of men and women from Wood County that gave the ultimate sacrifice in service to our country. We lost these five gentlemen too early due to illness related to their service to our country. We welcome the Niprath, McGregor, Budzinski, Cox, and Parmeter families and friends today. It's an honor to have you here. If you are comfortable standing while we remember your loved one, we invite you to do so. We remember Richard D. Budzinski. Rich was drafted into the U.S. Army in June 1968 
and received advanced training as a combat engineer at Fort Leonard Wood. He served as a construction specialist with the 20th Engineer Brigade near Dao Tang, Vietnam. Rich served his country until February 1970, returning to the area to work for Preway, the feed mill, and many years of field work with his best friend Jack. He married Joanne Altman in 1995. In 2002, he proudly opened Rich's Chainsaw Sales and Service in Rudolph. He was very talented at repairing used chainsaws and any small engines. He was a proud member of American Legion Post 485 and the Vietnam Veterans of America Chapter 101. Richard passed away on July 2, 2020. Missing Rich are his wife, Joanne, his brothers, sisters, and numerous nieces and nephews and in-laws. Randall Everett Cox. Randall was a 1965 grad of Lincoln High School. He enlisted in the U.S. Army in 1966 and completed basic and advanced training at Fort Leonard Wood in Fort Ord, Cali and Fort Ord, California. He was stationed at Fort Wainwright in Fairbanks, Alaska with an infantry battalion before serving a year in Vietnam. After his discharge in 1969, he returned to the area and Randy drove ready mixed concrete for 29 years and married Ginny Voles in 1997. Randall was proud to have earned a black belt in Taekwondo and enjoyed spending time in northern Wisconsin fishing with his brothers. Above all, he enjoyed spending time with his family and delighting in Sean, Brian, and Kyle's accomplishments. Randall passed away on March 2, 2020. He is missed by his family, grandchildren, his brothers and sisters, and many aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, and other relatives and friends. Randall Everett Cox. We are honoring James R. Niprath. James was born in Belvedere, Illinois, and entered the U.S. Army in 1965. He served his country in Vietnam from 1965 until 1966. In 1967, he married Lois Klein in Nakusa. James was a cranberry grower at Bennett Cranberry and Dempsey Cranberry. He was an avid outdoorsman who enjoyed hunting, fishing, trapping, and camping. James loved his family and his role as husband, father, and grandfather. James passed away on April 8, 2021. Missing him are his wife of 53 years, Lois, his children Rick, Tina, Randy, Renee, their spouses, his grandchildren, and brothers and sisters. James R. Nipbreath. We are memorializing also Robert R. McGregor, a 1964 graduate of Berlin High School, Robert continued his education at the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point and met and married the love of his life, Diane Keating. Robert served his country in the United States Army in the 173rd Airborne Division from 1966 to 1969 with a year of service in Vietnam. After his service, Robert and his wife, Diane, farmed from 1965 until 1985. Robert also worked as an inspector for the U.S. Department of Agriculture until his retirement. He was an avid outdoorsman and enjoyed fishing and hunting. A Bronze Star, Purple Heart, and, and Combat Badge recipient, Robert was a proud veteran and a proud member of the Disabled American Veterans. Robert passed away on August 15, 2021. Along with his wife, Diane, missing Robert are his children, Tammy, Jeff, and their spouses, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, brothers and sisters-in-law, and many nieces and nephews, and many close friends. Robert R. McGregor. We are memorializing Patrick S. Parmiter. Patrick served his country in the United States Navy during the Vietnam War from 1966 to 1970, serving part of that time aboard the attack transport USS Paul Revere. 
He married Judith Kester in 1975, and they were blessed with 43 years of marriage. He was employed as a warehouse supervisor for PepsiCo until his retirement. He was a life member of the Bucky Baldwin VFW post and a member and chaplain of the Joseph J. White American Legion post. Patrick loved to attend his grandchildren's sporting events and activities. He enjoyed every holiday, especially Christmas. He was very patriotic and a proud Vietnam vet that held the utmost respect for his country and his flag. Patrick passed away on May 15, 2019. He is dearly loved and missed by Judy, his children Justin, Lori, Landa, Linda, and their spouses. Also his grandchildren, his sisters, his twin sister, and several nieces and nephews. Today we dedicate these five service mem members to the Wood County Veterans Memorial and a grateful community and nation recognizes their family members for their sacrifice and these men whose lives ended too soon. Thank you families for participating today. We are honored also to have family and friends here who have remembered loved ones who have served with legacy stones, which are placed on the beds at the courthouse. The 21 men honored today represent the U.S. Army, Army Reserve and National Guard, the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Marine Corps Reserve, and the Hmong Secret Army who assisted the United States in the Vietnam War. They served in World War II, Korea and Vietnam, and stateside and abroad during the Cold War and the War on Terror. We know we have proud family members here, so we invite you all to stand as you are able and as you wish, as your legacy stone and your loved one is recognized. We are honoring World War II veteran Carl A. Bulow. Carl served overseas from March 13, 1942 until November 1945. He was a member of Bucky Baldwin Post, Bucky Baldwin Vost, the VFW. After his service, he worked at Consolidated Papers. He is honored by his son, Brian, and daughter-in-law, Char Bulow. We are honoring Vietnam War veteran, Donald J. Carlson. Don served in the U.S. Marine Corps in Vietnam from 1963 to 1966, and in the Marine Corps Reserve from 1966 to 1969. He was a longtime contributing member of the Nakusa VFW and very active in his community, serving on the Nakusa School Board and as union president for 15 years. He was a loving husband and father, and we miss him dearly. We are honoring Thomas Engwell. Thomas Engwell enlisted in the United States Army in 1971. He served with the 294th Artillery Group in Itzy, Germany from 1972 to 1973. After his service, he returned to his job at the Nakusa Paper Mill to complete 44 years of employment. He and his wife, Bernadine, have a son, a daughter, seven grandchildren, and his grandsons, Tom and Sam Allen, bought this legacy stone for their grandpa with their own savings. Thank you. We are honoring Cold War era veteran Gerald Herzberg. Staff Sergeant Sir Herzberg served in the 32nd Division of the Army National Guard for 13 years. He went on active duty in 1961 at Fort Lewis, Washington during the Berlin Crisis. He was the secretary treasurer for the Red Arrow Club and a member of the Rudolph American Legion Post 485. He was a founding member of the Southwood County Community Foundation and received the Jervis Award for his community service in 2001. Gerald is honored by Al Herzberg and family. We are honoring Master Sergeant Chris Hawks. Chris joined the Air Force and served as an aircraft mechanic for 20 years until he retired in 2020 as an E-7 Master Sergeant. He worked on F-15, F-16, F-22, and A-10 fighter aircraft all around the world. 
He completed his career as the Quality Assurance Chief Inspector for the 8th Fighter Wing at Kunsan Air Force Base in South Korea. Chris's accomplishments, dedication, and service to our country have made his parents, Dave and Jean, and the family very proud. We are honoring Vietnam veteran and Air Force Sergeant Richard W. Crone. Dick graduated from Lincoln High School in 1970 and served in the United States Air Force from 1971 to 1975 with service in Vietnam and Thailand. Upon returning to the area, Dick served in the Wood County Sheriff's Department as a deputy and then sergeant in the Wood County Jail. He retired after 32 years of dedicated service. Richard's name is on our memorial, a casualty of his service to our country, passing away in 2019. He is deeply loved and greatly missed by his family. We are honoring World War II veteran Chester Molesky. Chet met his high school graduation requirements a semester early to enlist in the U.S. Army, serving from 1946 to 1947 during the occupation of Japan. He worked in the 3057th Ordnance Service Company in Koshin, Japan. After returning to civilian life, Chet initiated in the United Association of Plumbers and Pipefitters, Local 434, as a journeyman plumber and was a proud member of goods in good standing for 64 years. Chet is remembered by his family and friends as a hard worker who never slowed down and was always willing to lend a hand. He is honored by his daughters Carolyn and Teresa and their families. We are honoring World War II veteran Francis Plant. Francis enlisted in the U.S. Army in July of 1941 and served in the Pacific Theater of Operations from 1942 until September of 1945. Upon his return from his service, he was employed by Consolidated Papers in the Buren Division for 35 years. He lived his life with an enduring love of God, his country, and his family. He honored his wife, Charlotte, he was proud of their four children, William, Mary, Jesse, and Thomas, three of which followed his example of service to our nation. And he loved giving whisker rubs to each of his 10 grandchildren, four of which followed in service to our nation. The plant grandchildren are very proud of his service. He is their hero. We are honoring brothers and World War II veterans, Harold Schroeder and William C. Schroeder. Carpenter's mate Harold Schroeder served his country as a CB during World War II in the Philippines, New Guinea, and Australia from 1941 to 1945. He was a member of VFW Post 2534 and American Legion Post 9. He was one of the charter members of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, and he served his community in many, many functions. Harold and his brother, William Schroeder, our next honoree, worked with their fathers remodeling many homes in the Rapids area as Schroeder and Sons Builders. He is honored by Mary Lou and Barry Gardner and family. We are honoring William C. Schroeder. PFC William Schroeder served in the Army during World War II from 1942 to 1945 in France, fighting in the Battle of the Bulge in an anti-aircraft artillery battery unit. He was a former building committee chairman and trustee of St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church and Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, and was a Carpenters Union member. He was known as a hard worker and missed by many upon his passing. He is honored by Diane Schroeder, Schroeder I'm sorry, and family. That was William C. Schroeder and Harold Schroeder. We are honoring Korean War veteran Frank J. Smith. Corporal Smith graduated from Tri-County High School in 1949 and served in the U.S. Army during the Korean War from 1952 to 1954. He was employed by Nakusa Papers for 31 years and was a member of both the Wisconsin Trappers Association and the National Rifle Association. His family is proud of his service. He is honored by his nephew and godchild, Michael Poggles. We are honoring World War II and U.S. Navy veteran Robert Smolarik. 
After his 1944 graduation from Lincoln High School, Seaman First Class Malaric served 19 months in the Navy, 12 months of that time aboard the USS Marathon and USS Pratt Victory in the Hawaiian and Marshall Islands and Okinawa. After his service, he had a 41-year career at Consolidated Papers, Consul Division. He was a dedicated church member and family man who had a kind word for everyone. He is honored by Mike and Sarah Christensen and families. He was a much-loved grandpa. We are honoring Korean War veteran Chief Warrant Officer to Franklin Frank D. Steinke. After his graduation from Lincoln High School, Frank enlisted in the Navy, attending school at Great Lakes, specializing in electronics. He served in the Korean War in the Medi Mediterranean Theater. After his Korean service, he served as a member of the Wisconsin Army National Guard 120th Field Artillery. Frank also worked in engineering at Volk Field, Air Force Base, and Fort McCoy until his retirement. He is honored by John Vandeloup. We are honoring World War II veteran and Bronze Star recipient William Stelzer. William served in the U.S. Army during World War II as a rifleman in the European theater. He was employed at Great Northern Nakusa Paper Company for 34 years. He was an avid gardener, fisherman who enjoyed spending time with his family and relatives. He is honored by his daughters, Jean and Susan. We are honoring Vietnam veteran James Webb, Jr. JB served in the U.S. Navy during the Vietnam era from 1962 to 1965. He was a proud CB, a proud member of VFW Post 2534, and the VVA Chapter 101. He proudly bore a flag with his head held high in many local parades and events, regardless of the weather or temperature. Every December in King, Wisconsin, J.B. would lay wreaths down for the Central Wisconsin Veterans Cemetery, wreaths across America. J.B. is very much missed. We are honoring Vietnam veteran James Wesleski. James joined the Navy in 1963 and served until 1969 aboard two guided missile frigates, the USS Gridley and the USS Horn. He's a wonderful husband, father, friend, and community member. His wife, Melody, and daughters, Brandy and Jen, are very proud of his service. We are honoring Vietnam veteran Thomas A. Winkles. Tom entered the U.S. Army in 1964 and served during the Vietnam War until 1966. Tom worked for Consolidated Papers Incorporated in the Wisconsin Rapids Division for 35 years, retiring in 2000 as a machine tender on the number 15 machine. Tom loved hunting, golf, and was a great sports fan. He's missed by many and honored today by his wife, Jolyn Winkles, and family. Thank you. And now I would like to invite Sao Tao, the second in command of the Wisconsin Lao Veterans of America, Chapter 3. He is going to name, read the names of the men who served in the secret army in Vietnam alongside American soldiers. And these men are honored with legacy stones. Okay, thank you. Following the name of all the men who served in the Secret War Army in Vietnam alongside American soldiers, name all of the legacy stones are So Tai Hu. Jew Samoa Nai Hua Tao Nye Tong Mua Ga Xiong Yang Ok 
Okay, these are the men who serve <coughs> in the Secret War Army in Vietnam alongside American soldiers. Thank you. We want to thank the families for your contributions, and your, your dedications to the Legacy Stones. And we also want to right now give all of our veterans a round of applause. And now I'd like to ask Reverend McGregor to come up for our closing prayer. Sir? I would first like to mention that the fourth name that Karen read off today in the memorial was a Robert R. McGregor. I don't know who he is, but um, I happen to be Caleb Robert McGregor, and named after my grandfather, who was a Korean War veteran. And perhaps the R in Robert's middle name is Roy, so that he could be Rob Roy McGregor. I don't know. I will give a closing prayer, and following my amen, I will send you forth with a commission, but to also recognize that we will have our rifle salute and taps following. Let us pray. God of compassion, be with the veterans of our country and those in other places as well who have fought for that single value of freedom for all. Bless them with the wholeness and love they have shown in their loyal service to an ideal and principle much larger than just themselves. Shelter them, heal their wounds, and comfort their hearts. Grant them peace, and call us a grateful nation to come to their aid. May their dedication to the ongoing pursuit of life, liberty, happiness, and blessedness be remembered down the years as a blessing binding one generation to the next and lived out in the ordinary daily lives of a grateful people. Our protector and redeemer, our shield and our rock, we pray. Amen. And now receive this benediction. Friends, go forth and create that new world of which the ancient prophet spoke and believed possible, where nation does not feel the need to attack another, nor do people feel the need to practice war anymore. A community of peace at last, where swords and spears and weapons of all kinds are hammered into tools of planting and harvest. So make what sounds like foolish fantasy now into a reality for those blessed enough to follow us in this life. Thank you.
Before we conclude, let me just um, say a, a couple of things and then thank some people. We're here today because of the weather, but if you all haven't been uh, either today or very recently to our beautiful memorial in front of the Wood County Courthouse, please go. Go and um, honor the service members that are on the wall and admire the lovely legacy stones. And um, I want to say, uh, say thank you to some people that helped make this happen here today. So Maureen Hodgson and Cindy Tork, who set up this facility today on short notice. Uh, Gene Olson, the wonderful director of the Wind Ensemble and the various bands in the school district and the Wind Ensemble. Your music today was lovely. Um, everybody who participated in today's ceremony, thank you. Uh, the Veterans Memorial Committee, who uh, does a great job putting this on twice a year. And then the VFW Post 2534, the Vietnam Veterans of America Chapter 101, the American Legion Post Numbers 9, 54, and 442, American Legion Riders District 8, and the Disabled American Veterans Chapter 55. Um, thank you all for being here and enjoy the rest of your Veterans Day. Thank you for coming. <laughs>